Hey y'all, it's Chris and you're listening to One Cross Radio and we are back with Steve. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> We've restarted this twice now because we keep saying stupid stuff. Yep, no, that, that happens with us. We just get sidetracked and everything crashes and burns. Yep. Good times. So what are we talking about this time, Chris? <laughs> well, Steve, uh, this time we're talking about comics because you and I both are huge into comics and superheroes and we debate about them till we're blue in the face so right off the bat uh let's talk about spider-man all right what are some of your favorite spider-man stories uh some of my favorite spider-man stories i love the early stuff all of the early stuff is mostly really good steve the stanley steve ditko Stan, uh, stanley uh john Romita senior and then um Jerry Conway and John Romita Sr. So sort of everything from the creation up until the death of Gwen Stacy uh, is really, really good. Spoilers, she dies. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's really great stuff. I, I really Did we like... do a spoiler tag on something that happened well over, like, yeah, what, seven, 30 years ago? 40 years ago. 40 yeah. years ago. Uh, I don't know. Um, I really like all that early stuff. Uh, anything written by Roger Stern in the 80s, he wrote, he's the guy who invented the Hobgoblin. Uh, mm. Really good stuff. There's couple stories in particular that he did that are really good there's one called um the kid who collects spider-man it's actually a backup Ooh. in in another really not so great story where spider-man fights a guy named the wrecker uh but in the backup spider-man visits this kid uh and basically reveals his identity to him and it's really 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 good it was kind of referenced in the old 90s cartoon right uh, a little it, bit was the kid because I know in the 90s cartoon the kid was dying yeah that's the and, yeah, and spoilers and, yeah, you find that out like in the last panel of that comic, right so. okay another spoiler for you guys the kid's dying too um, <laughs> but it's a really good well written story um, Roger Stern also did one called Nothing Can Stop the Juggernaut um, mm. uh, where Spider-Man has to fight the Juggernaut it's just really good Spider-Man um, facing off against sort of an unstoppable foe um, oh one of my favorite Spider-Man stories of all time is uh, there was a uh, a run in the '90s of uh, spectacular Spider-Man, um, which they still need to use for a movie name. Yeah, like I was so disappointed that the Amazing Spider-Man Two was not called Spectacular Spider-Man. And heck, you could even get to Web of Spider-Man for like when he has the alien suit. As long as you don't do go kitty on it and go friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, because <laughs> yeah. that's just not a good title. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyways. Uh, yeah, no, so there's a, written by Jane Demadius, who's the same guy who wrote the Craven, uh, Craven's Last Hunt, which is also really good. Right. Uh, for an amazing Spider-Man. Actually, I think that was a crossover. But anyway, so he wrote a run uh, in Spectacular Spider-Man about the death of Harry Osborn. Um, and that whole run with with Harry uh, kind of losing his mind and and then eventually dying is so good. Was um, was he battling a drug addiction at that point as well? Or no, that, that was, was earlier, that was right? earlier in the seventies. Okay. Um, at this point, Harry's married and has a son. Oh, uh, and and Peter was married to Mary Jane before that whole crazy retcon. Uh, and oh, that's so fresh. And there's a <laughs> the arc sort of starts off sort of around the one. 50, 180, somewhere in there, a spectacular Spider-Man with a story, a story called The Child Within that kind of uh, compares Peter's childhood and Harry's childhood with the kind of loss and trauma they've both gone through mm. uh, and kind of pits them as like these friends who are now kind of at odds and they're enemies and it's really, really hard. And then in Spectacular 200 is the last one where Harry dies and uh, he's come back to life by this point. But because uh, unless you're Uncle Ben, you don't stay dead. Yep. There used to be a saying that was, unless you're uh, Uncle Ben, uh, who was it? Bucky. Bucky or Jason, Jason Todd, Todd, you didn't yeah. come back from the dead. And two of those have come back from the dead. But yeah. anyway, um, And that within the same year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, that's a really great run, that stuff by Dematius on Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, uh, Brian Michael Bendis' Ultimate Spider-Man is also really good. I'm just looking at my bookshelf right here. Yeah, no, it's, uh, we're right I have it. His I whole run picture of it. is really, 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 really good. Uh, yeah, I could go on. There's lots of good stuff. Yeah. I love that you mentioned... Lots of crappy stuff, too. Oh, there's lots of good stuff. <laughs> I love that you mentioned The Night Gwen Stacy died, because that's probably my favorite Spider-Man story. Yeah. I don't know why I said Tori. Like, it... 
I said like even though I know it's coming, it's still kind of an emotional read, and yeah. it has such an impact that other comics outside of a handful didn't have at that time. Yeah, and then kind well, that that comic uh, is historically important. It's it's considered the end of the Silver Age of comics because it's the first time a superhero didn't save his girlfriend. That's yeah. the first time it's ever happened. Which then became a trope after yeah. where it got more, more ridiculous. Yeah, of Green Lantern. Yeah. Um, I actually have those issues on the wall. Yeah, I might. Uh, yeah, great story. And they did a. Uh, they released the trade paperback that had that and uh, the what I can't remember the title of the arc, but it was where George Stacy died. Yeah, yeah. So um, they're just called the death of the Stacys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I did like I can't remember who the author was. Of what? Um, well, it was I consider it a fall a loose follow up Spider Man Blue. Oh yeah, Jeff Loeb did that. Yeah, yeah that's which, a great. That's a really good. I don't love Jeff Loeb in general. Yeah, uh, in terms of his writing, but that's actually really good. Yeah, it's yeah. that one knows also like as you're reading, I'm like, no, this is this and, is and a Tim, little bit more of an emotional story. Just cause I I'm a Gwen guy. I yeah. I prefer her over Mary Jane. Yeah. I love what how Gwen when she died, how it impacted Mary Jane, and Mary Jane grew from that. Yeah, and Tim Sale's art on that issue is really really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I know we. We're going to get to it later, but we disagree about Amazing Spider-Man, or especially Amazing Spider-Man 2, and how bad it is. Yeah. Or, to me, how le- slightly... Le- I'm not going to say it's good, but to yeah, we, me, to me, the crutch was if they could get the impact of Gwen. The crux? The, the crux, thank okay. you. Because um, I can't words. No, um, the crux, I can't words at all. I cannot words at all. Hundo P. Um, <laughs> the crux was if they could get... Gwen, nail Gwen's death in the way of where it, it emotionally hits you and it's ambiguous enough where it's like in the comic it is Spider-Man that does it and in the movie there's enough to suggest that it was still the whiplash yeah. with the web hitting and then her head going down and smacking where I'm like that's there I was looking forward to the follow up so yeah the, the movie is You're really dark I, I, I do <laughs> go towards the darker stories yeah um so for me, that like saved it because that whole second half where they were trying to set up way too much was so frustrating. Yeah. And that when they got that, I'm like, all right, they nailed that. That was the emotional anchor for me for this flick. Yeah. If because if they mess this story up, like this will be worse than Spider Man Three. Yeah. And they changed a lot, but they still got it. So I. Yeah. Yeah, I go I, towards the sadder stuff. I uh, <laughs> knew that Gwen was gonna die in that movie. I saw a set shot of her wearing the the outfit. purple the purple skirt and the trench coat and the little headband yeah and I was like oh she's a goner just because of that picture right so I yeah. knew like a year beforehand that she was going to die and and I was looking forward to that because it's literally besides Uncle Ben dying Gwen Stacy's death is the most important Spider-Man story mm-hmm. and by the time it came I was so emotionally checked out of that movie that I just didn't care anymore because I felt like they just shoehorned it in at the end after they spent yeah. the whole movie trying to world build and, and franchise set up. And I was, and, and, and as I've mentioned, Harry Osborn, those, he's my favorite villain in Spider-Man, mm-hmm. uh, mostly because of the stories from Thematius. And, and just, it's so tragic that Peter's best friend is his, his enemy, right? Yeah. Um, and I just thought, again, again, <laughs> they screwed up Harry Osborn and I was so angry that I just didn't even care anymore by the time she died. <laughs> that so. that was kind of my feeling with X Men Apocalypse with yeah. Angel and Angel Ar- again, <laughs> Angel again, then Archangel. I'm like, how are you gonna mess up this awesome character twice? Like, how are you gonna do this? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, and I, I like I totally get that because um, Amazing Spider Man two, it, it's a frustrating movie. Yeah, to me, it's still a watchable one. I'm like, we're gonna get there. <laughs> um, so what <laughs> we're gonna come back to this apparently <laughs> we are we are because we talk about Spider-Man all the time uh-huh. like we all the time uh-huh. um what's your favorite cartoon adaptation of Spider-Man oh man you're doing this to me I am doing this to uh, me. I I grew up loving the 90s one uh the so good yeah with I, lasers and everything because on Fox you can't throw yeah, punches yeah. or have guns that shoot and, and a vampire who sucks your blood through his hands because they yeah. couldn't have that it's um, the, that similar mentality to with Beast Wars where it was like no we gotta call it Beasties because Wars is too yeah. 
and like well, in, in, in too the U- violent. In the UK, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was called Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles because they weren't allowed to call them ninjas. Oh my gosh. And and Michelangelo used a grappling hook because nunchucks were somehow not okay. Which it, it, with the Beast Wars, with the Ninja Turtles, and the Spider Man, it's like no, I. I see a gun. I know it's a gun. Yeah, yeah. With Beast Wars, it's like beasties as explosions are going yeah. around in the yeah. background. Ninja Turtles like, dude's got a sigh. Yeah. Like that could stab somebody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not in the, the, the not in the in, cartoon. In the Ninja but... Turtle cartoons, nobody ever actually used their weapons unless they were fighting robots. But um, <laughs> did the robots still get stabbed though? Like the they motion got, they is got, still they there? got slashed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, same thing with Wolverine in the X Men cartoons. Yeah. He only ever used them on doors and sentinels. Set, uh, censorship things are, are odd. Yeah. So anyway, that yes. cartoon. Uh, <laughs> I think part of what was really good about it was it was um, really thoughtful. Like it wasn't just sort of like action. Like there was a story to it, mm. uh, and it was really well done. They also um, started doing some like season long arcs because you can look it up on yeah, Netflix. Yeah. It's it's great. Yeah. I, you know that guy that made it? I can't remember his name right now. I listened to a podcast called The Superior Spider Talk, which is good. If you like Spider-Man, you should, you should check it out. They interviewed the guy who made the show and the guy who acted as Spider-Man. And he did like a Kickstarter thing for a show that he was trying to make called The Rocket Men. Oh, yeah. And I heard about if that. if you donated money, he would send you a script for the un, this unmade show of them finding Mary Jane at the end. And, the- and I was like, what? And then it was already like clothes and you couldn't do oh, it anymore <laughs> like, yeah because yeah. there there were rumors like that the if because the whole reason the show got shut down was essentially one of the higher ups at Fox ended up hating that guy even though the show was a rating success they were like you're gone yeah well he <laughs> said he said that um, he as far as he was concerned the show was like the story was told they were going to go find Mary yeah. Jane but yeah they, they had another arc in ready if they were going to keep going with it but then one of, canceled. one of the rumors and I, I was so excited for it and I would have loved to see it get made was it's like the rumor was you were going to find out Mary Jane was in I think early 1900s London <laughs> being stalked by Jack the Ripper that but is Jack weird. the Ripper was carnage Oh, because they sense. the idea of him getting time displaced because it was the accelerator thing as well. I don't even remember. I just remember that she was like a water clone at one point. Yeah, that happened where they brought her back, and then suddenly she's a clone of Hydro Man. Yeah, or yeah, they're a clone of herself. Yeah, a clone of herself, but with Hydro Man's <laughs> thank clones. You, thank DNA. you, Clone Saga. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> the so that that is definitely up there. Uh, the newer one, the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon that was on for a couple seasons before it got canceled. We started watching that together. It was really, I have the whole thing on DVD. Yeah. It's it's really good. Yeah. Um, Except the, for the theme song. The theme song kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. The animations, uh, it takes a bit to get used to too. But it, it was also a really thoughtful cartoon put together by people who obviously knew the source material and liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it got canceled for that Ultimate Spider-Man show, which was okay, but it was just very kiddy and... The, the yeah. only thing I ever got curious about it is like I, I love uh, Spider-Man 2099 yeah so then I knew he was coming in I was like that's kind of cool and he I was in that show yeah I think they did a, a version of something similar to Spider-Verse oh yeah that's awesome. on it so I'm like I've seen Spider-Man 2099 animated I'm like ooh I want to check that out but heck that show did one with Ultimate Deadpool I love Deadpool but how they had him in the episode just put me off any interest into watching yeah. Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, I watched like part of one season and it stopped. So yeah, yeah I, I have a hard time choosing between Spectacular and the 90s half cell animation, half CGI one. That was, yeah. They're both really good for different reasons. Yeah, I I, I think for me... Definitely it's... better than Spider-Man and his amazing friends. <laughs> I watched an episode of that on Netflix. Yeah, that was, that was rough. Because that had like... It... Iceman and and Firestar and they have like a games room that if you press a certain button it all flips around into a command center for their superhero hideout what? and they have to hide it from Aunt May and her fluffy dog like it's really strange oh my gosh yeah anyway sorry I cut you off no that that's all good I I think for me I you've you've said to me in private I think I'll always hold uh, the the 90s cartoon it's it's my comparable for Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Much similar to X-Men, I keep comparing to the amazing 90s cartoon and then Batman. So much of Yeah, anything by Bruce Timm is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So much of but especially with the the Batman run, like the cartoon. Yeah. Like whenever it's a new guy voicing Batman in an animation or in the movie, I'm like you're no Kevin Conroy. You're not Kevin Conroy. <laughs> or when you're the Joker, you're I'm like Mar- you're, you're no Mark, Mark Hamill. Yeah, like yeah. you're 
you're doing good and your performance is all right, but I'd still cherish the chance to hear either of those guys somehow in the live action. Did you know that Mark Hamill played the Hobgoblin in the 90s Spider-Man show? Yeah, too? and at points you could... He also... You haven't watched... I don't think you've watched it. He also voiced it... Um, voiced Fire Lord in the amazing Avatar The Last Airbender Oh, I've never seen that. Series run. Okay. Check that out. Don't yeah. watch the movie. The movie's horrible. No, I've seen that, unfortunately. <laughs> the The show was amazing, and yeah. he ended up voicing him. And you can hear a bit of his Joker, but I gotta give Hamill credit. He doesn't... He tries to differ his voices with different characters. Yeah. 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 All right, so now this part's the fun one, and we uh, we end up doing this, and you kind of started Fights. to talk about it in the uh, in the guest post you did when you were reviews it, reviewing Spider Man Homecoming. How would you rank the Spider Man movies? I can't, can't do it. <laughs> I have no Spider Man. Amazing Spider Man Two is the worst one. Spider Man Three is the second worst one, and I like the rest of them. Okay. Just like, and I to know, varying degrees, but yeah, no, there has not been a Spider-Man movie that I would say, man, that's perfect. Yeah, there has been several Spider-Man movies that I think have gotten different aspects of the character right uh, in different ways, and they're all flawed. Yeah, um, I think probably in terms of just what movie is the most well-made, well put together movie that will probably stand the test of time, Homecoming. Yeah, because it stands on the shoulders of the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. I can't choose. I don't. I don't know. All right, fair enough. I know, uh, and we disagree. And I know I'm in the minority on the internet. But really? Oh yes, definitely. Well, in this one, okay. <laughs> in in this opinion, um, I would still put Spider Man three at the bottom. Yeah. For me, because it is, I cannot like I I can't really watch the first three. Yeah. The first three are very loved. I don't find much redeeming about them. Yeah. Um. So I would actually I would probably put Amazing Spider-Man two below the other ones just because Amazing Spider-Man one and two, even though especially two is a very big mess. Like Garfield, Stone inhabit their characters so well. You'd put it below what? I'd put them. I wouldn't put them. I wouldn't put Amazing Spider-Man two at the bottom. For me, it's probably. Yeah, I know three is the worst. For three me. is the worst for me. Yeah. It is the most frustrating. Yeah. Next to Batman, Superman, like probably the most frustrating comic book movie. Um, I'd probably put it. it for me, it's worst is Spider-Man three, Spider-Man one, and then. Spider-Man 2 was better put together. I gotta give it credit for that. But I can't watch Spider-Man 2. I, did, I hate Tobey Maguire. So you put Spider-Man 2 below Amazing Spider-Man 2? A little bit. I, like, it's it's that edging wow. part. Just because I know, I know everybody loves it, but there's not much for me there to love. I don't like Tobey Maguire's take on Spider-Man. Yeah. I don't like the tone of the movie. Yeah. I don't like Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. Octopus, yeah, he the guy. He wasn't Doc Ock. He was a different he, character. He wasn't Doc Ock. He's a different character. I don't like the raptor claws aspect. And the it's raptor claws, where, where it's like, it's the, oh when the when the, the they're turning it like he's having a full arms on, are talking the to arms him. are yeah. talking to him. Like the only thing that I like about Spider Man Two was the part where Harry finds the friggin' goblin that closet. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, Spider-Man 3 was such a letdown after that And scene. I'm like, you should end the movie right there. And then they carried on with the, like, let's do a five-minute Mary Jane running out of her wedding scene. Passing the Punisher in the park randomly. Kind of, yeah. That was Thomas Jane. That was? Yeah. Awesome. She yeah. passes, to, he looks back at the camera, and, and oh. Thomas Jane is in the park watching her run. It was very strange. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, just a little because Punisher was coming out like same right, year, I right? Know. I don't even know if it was by Sony. I don't know, um, weird. Yeah, so with me, it's I I get it that it is a better made movie, yeah. but there's just, for me the my struggle is I'm like I just don't enjoy it. Yeah, it's cheesy, Where, and they haven't aged well either. No, they've aged terribly. Yeah, like so Jurassic Park has aged better, <laughs> and it's like an yeah. interactive CD ROM. The special effects in there look better than stuff coming out now yeah. well and, and I, think, but, I think the reality of it is all of the superhero movies that have come out today owe a huge debt of gratitude to the first three X-Men movies and the first mm -hmm. three Spider-Man movies because those movies aren't the best movies ever yeah they haven't aged tr tr 
terrifically well. No. Um, but without them, you wouldn't have what we have now. You yeah. wouldn't have the Dark Knight. We wouldn't have the Iron Man and, and Captain America Civil War. and like It just wouldn't have happened without testing the waters with those ones. You could make the argument Batman-wise, just because Batman, uh, with the exception of Batman Robin, yeah. has always sold. Like I Batman think, Forever sold? Batman Forever did really good business. Okay. But, but so Not critically. What, but, I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying, though, is... Yeah. And, and maybe, maybe you're right about this, because the Batman Begins is sort of a reaction to Batman and Robin but the superhero genre in movies is taken more seriously now mm-hmm. because it had room to grow after these other ones right and that's where I gotta try to I, I'm yeah. trying to give it some credit and yeah. be like it is a better made movie it doesn't have the mess yeah. that Amazing Spider-Man 2 does that's why it's a struggle because for yeah. me I'm like I don't like it but I gotta I want to give it that recognition yeah. Where, but Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man Two, the slight ad- edge out is like I really, I, Garfield was my Spider Man. He reminded me so much of the '90s cartoon Spider Man. Yeah. He did so <laughs> 90s, well. '90s '90s cartoon Spider Man had three shirts that he wore depending on what episode it was, <laughs> and he was a tank man. That yeah, guy was that's diesel. True. That's true. That's true. But, but besides that, yeah. <laughs> that, like he had the yeah, he was very handsome, and you're like, well, Peter Parker's a nerd and all that, but they've never depicted him as ugly or anything. Yeah. And he had the sarcastic trait down, the science stuff I bought. Yeah, more. yeah, for sure. Like, ama- I probably put Amazing Spider-Man at two, and then Homecoming, it had a lot of strengths where it wasn't the Spider-Man movie I wanted, because I'm... But it was the Spider-Man movie that you deserved. <laughs> <laughs> like, home- something. Homecoming, it, I wanted, I'm just done with high school Spider-Man. I'm like, alright, we're doing this again. This is the third time in what a 13 year span something like that no no like okay 15 year span but still like he was in high school for 30 issues and then he was in college for like 20 years well unless you're reading ultimate spider-man unless you're reading ultimate spider-man he never quite graduated high school yeah that's true well he died and then came back as comic book characters do yeah so i'd probably put homecoming at one but yeah so i think that the rainy spider-man movies um they capture sort of the feel of the comics the best. They're sort of classic. The Mary Jane in them is not the Mary Jane from the comics. No. Uh, the acting in the, the movies aren't great. And some of those other flaws we've already talked about. Yeah. They try to make all the villains sympathetic. Where, like, Dr. Octopus is just a megalomaniac scientist, mad scientist who's a yeah. criminal mastermind. But anyway, um, they, they're, very, they're very classic comic booky. Um, and actually, I still think, out of all six Spider-Man movies, the Spider-Man Two, the action scenes between Spider-Man and Doctor Octopus are the best action scenes we've seen in a Spider-Man movie yet. I, th- they're, I think they're the best ones, um, except for maybe actually, as much as I'm loath to admit it, maybe the scene where Harry Osborn picks up Peter when he's on his scooter mm-hmm. in Spider-Man Three. That was pretty amazing too. Um, uh, anyway, but I, I think I really like those just they they just went for it like the goblin throwing his girlfriend off the bridge and that you know like they really just adapted stuff um and they changed some of the heart of it but i think they did a really good job with that um i think amazing spider-man in the movies their strength is definitely the casting yeah andrew garfield and emma stone did an amazing job but also i don't think a lot of casual fans would know this but the first one, people didn't like it because they thought that he was a smart aleck. He was mean. Uh, Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker. He was he was not just like quippy. He was like meanly sarcastic. He was out for kind of revenge. Had a chip yeah. on his shoulder. Um, that is Steve Ditko's Spider Man. Yeah. Like, if you read Amazing Fantasy fifteen, Spider Man one, Spider Man is out to make money for himself. Yeah. He's out to like he literally says one day like his his friends in high school are being mean to him and he's like the next panel is him like one day i'll get my revenge like <laughs> I, I, he literally says that like yeah. I, I don't think people understand how close spider-man became to being a villain if it wasn't for uncle ben's yeah. death um he he literally considers several times in the first couple of issues i need to take care of my aunt maybe i should just go be a criminal like yeah. he, he actually thinks that um and, and, and I think the first Amazing Spider-Man really captures that dark, brooding, creepy side that Steve Ditko brought to... He was the artist in those first 30-ish issues. And then this, after that, John Romita Jr. comes in, and he was he was 
a romance artist. Like he did like the teen, the kind of Archie type things before that. Uh, and so all of a sudden Peter Parker is handsome and then burly and, and all the girls are gorgeous. And literally like, the first issue that he's there, his friends at school are like, well, we all decided we're going to be nicer to Peter. And like it changes the whole, like there was yeah. actually letters written in like, you changed my Spider-Man. This isn't what I wanted. Yeah. And I think the second movie captures that. Like they really did a good job of, of capturing that aspect of the comics in it. Um, and I, yeah, I liked that they, I liked that they did that. I liked that Spider Man had an edge. He's not a character that always needs an edge, and that's why you can't, you can't do a Dark Knight, Nolan treatment of Spider Man that would last more than like half a movie, just yeah. because he's a character that has had a tremendous amount of tragedy and dark stuff happen to him. But the majority of people think like, oh, he's always sunny, like Superman. Like, he will always do the right thing, and you brought up a bunch of great points. He's had an edge, he's struggled with doing the right thing, yep. so I like that representation of the character as well, yep. where it's like, let's tone on, tone down on the some aspects. Yeah, You can't have a hard-edged Spider-Man, because that's not true to the character either, 100%. Yeah, and I, and I think, uh, as, like... I really didn't like Amazing Spider-Man 2. I really, 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 no, no, really no. didn't like it. But, and like, it's my least favorite. But yeah. my favorite moment in all the six movies is in that movie where the little kid is getting beat up with his science fair project and Spider-Man yeah. comes and, like, walks him home and encourages him and fixes the windmill or whatever. Like, that's just, that's what spider Man's about, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, like, that's the kind of the frustration of that movie with me is that it has some amazing parts and I, I like the, the frustrating romance between him and, and Gwen where he's struggling with not wanting to be not being with her but he wants to be with her yeah and my wife hates that she actually really doesn't like that <laughs> part of the movie at all but and then all of a sudden like he beats well, I just thought I don't know what Jamie Foxx was being directed to do but that no. was a terrible interpretation of, of Electro yeah um, well and that like the frustrating thing with that one and to me I'm like how do you get to the Spider-Man 3 issues just one movie sooner where it's like alright let's just build and over stuff and suddenly it's like okay we got Harry Osborn running around doing Bond stuff with little to no reason of he, wait how? He, he <laughs> stormed a maximum security prison with a taser and got in somehow yeah how did that happen? <laughs> yeah and it's not even like they address like oh I've been like while I've been off at boarding school I'm learning to be an insane soldier or something where it's like <laughs> that's out of left field that's not Harry Osborn but at least I have an understanding of how your character is doing yeah. this yeah I think I think the problem too with the Green Goblin is he doesn't work very well on the screen you either have a metal mask or, yeah. or crazy spiky green hair face like I'm, I don't know how they would do him well and but anyway. they need to do him well because he's it's he's a, such a pivotal he, yeah, not, Would you say he's he's Spider Man's Joker, like in terms of like who, the Green Goblin in yeah, general? Yeah, not like in terms of he's insane, but when everybody thinks of Batman's villain, they think of the Joker. Sure, you'll think you'd be like Penguin, Poison Ivy, Bane, and all that, but it is Batman and the Joker, like yeah. It, it depends on. Well, there's a debate. It's either it's either Norman Osborn, or it's Doc Ock. Okay. Um, and they both have been like Doc Ock is definitely in the early stuff a bigger thing, and then Norman Osborn, obviously he killed Gwen Stacy, so that put him up there. But then he died, and then he wasn't around for a long time, and then he came back. And, and the then clone the clone saga, saga and the... and then but this, so then it was you know Norman Osborn's the guy, and then Doc Ock just recently stole Peter Parker's life for a while. Yeah, and, uh, it's actually a decent. If you get over the stupidity of it, it's actually decent. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so like that—that's the debate. Is it Doc Ock? Is it it's sort of those two? Right. Green Goblin or Doc Ock? Like I, being born when I was born and getting into comics when I did, it was Venom was high up there, and then Venom became his own character. And yeah, oh, Sonny's doing that thing, and that's a different topic. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Although we're uh, kind of ranting now. What are we? What are we talking about? Yeah, <laughs> we were. This is what this is for. Okay. Um, all right. So we've talked about Spider Man for a good thirty minutes. Uh, who are some of your other favorite superheroes? Um, Daredevil. Um, when they made the Netflix show and everyone was like, oh, this is going to suck. I was like, no, it is not going to suck. That movie sucked. Daredevil is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And I was really excited about it and they've done a good job with it. 
Um, I've actually been reading a lot of old Daredevil. I have like the old essential black and white Daredevil stuff. Yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> Classic <laughs> Daredevil is really bad. You know, they talk about how Stan Lee didn't do that much in creating Spider-Man. It was really mostly Ditko. Yeah. Reading Daredevil has made me believe that because the concept is really cool. But everything else is just like, this is not super good. So I just don't think that Bill Everett, the artist for Daredevil, was as good as Steve Ditko was in fleshing things out. And there's a it's a similar thing with Bob Kane and who, I can't Bill remember. Bill Finger. Bill Finger. For Batman, yeah. For Batman, yeah, where it's like, oh, Bob Kane gets first billing, Bob Kane gets all this. When, it's, yeah. when you look at the original idea of Bob Kane's for Batman, you're yeah. like, this is not that character. This yeah. character would not have done well. Yeah. Well, and, and I think I've, I've even heard in an interview Stan Lee said, I he's my character I came up with the idea the person who comes up with the idea gets the credit but if I had gone to another artist it probably wouldn't have done as well mm -hmm. so yeah uh, anyway so I really like Daredevil and I really like Frank Miller's stuff and Ed Brubaker's stuff and Bendis's stuff and uh, yeah the TV show um, I also really like uh, I'm not as huge of a DC guy but I, I like I like the Teen Titans. Um, I like sort of more classic DC um, or anything written by Jeff Johns is pretty good. Um, I don't really have a character that I gravitate to. Um, I like Nightwing. I think I Nightwing's like, awesome. I like Nightwing better than I like Batman because hmm. uh, Batman's sort of like he's so broken and yet so put together. There's sort of no room for growth in him. Whereas Nightwing is like the opposite of that. He's Batman's sounding board and then breaks away to do his own thing. Yeah. And which like I I've seen it and I, I've seen people be like if you're as perfect as Batman because Batman like especially when you talk about comic book fans they're like Batman against Thanos so like Batman Batman will figure out a way to yeah. do it I've had that argument yeah and it's well if anything the Batman versus Superman has proven is that if he doesn't have time to prepare all he can do is run away from Doomsday <laughs> oh man that movie is so bad. <laughs> um, but that's true though, right? Like Batman, if he has, you give him a couple days to prepare, he'll probably win. If you take him by surprise, Superman will break him in half. That, and the, the whole thing is uh, with Batman, it's like the idea of he's so smart and so prepared yeah. that he's, even though what is seemingly a random thing, like he's been aware of this character, even yeah. though he's they're on the extreme periphery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd be, he'd be ready for... <laughs> He'd, have, he'd just have some kryptonite there to mess with him or something. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I love that you said that about Nightwing because whenever people are like, why would Batman need a Robin? They've done it. They did it so well in the 90s show and I think through some of the Arkham games and stuff, he needs that person there to hold him back. Yeah. Like, even though he hasn't, in the main continuity, gone out to kill since the 30s, <laughs> yeah. like, he has that person who holds him like really helps hold him back from getting like even closer to that line and crossing it. Yeah. There there's um have you read any of Grant Morrison's Batman stuff when he dies and a little goes bit back in time? I've read a bit of it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't read the back in time stuff cuz I was like comic books it's, but it's it's like crazy stuff. It's really like anything written by Grant Morrison you basically need annotated notes to understand what's going on, but yeah. it's really crazy stuff and in, in there he talks about how so he gets killed by Doomsday but doesn't actually get killed. He gets sent back skipping through time and and as he does so he basically creates the his home his own mythos of himself yeah. which is really crazy um but all the way through it it's talking about how he's a loner and he needs to figure this out by himself um and and by the end of it he realizes that actually he's not a loner he wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for alfred and robin mm -hmm. and all the other robins and batgirl and, and commissioner gordon and all the other batgirls because yeah been yeah yeah 12 and so on and so forth. Yeah. So like this is the idea that Batman's Bat family is actually super important to who he is as a character. Uh, so I thought that was a really cool yeah. point. Um, the other one, which is like my first love in comic books because I was I grew up in the 80s and 90s is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, yeah. Oh my I, gosh. I'm so I, glad you're talking about that. Uh, I grew up with that really awful TV show which I didn't realize was really awful until a couple years ago. Because that um, when you're a kid it's just like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's got a, it's got a cool theme song. It's got an amazing theme. Do you know who wrote that theme song? Um... What's the guy who did, like, he's, like, the producer behind, like, Big Bang Theory and Two and a Half Men? No! Yeah, he used to be in, in Jingles, and he wrote that song. What's his name? Chuck Lorre? Yeah, Chuck Lorre, yeah. Wow! Yeah, he wrote that song. Anyway. 
<laughs> tidbit of knowledge for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the new IDW Ninja Turtle stuff is really good. So Chris, it's, Chris told me to read it for years, and I didn't believe him, and then I did, and it's really good. It's probably one of the best. I, I haven't read it in a while, but it was for a long time what I consider one of the best consistent runs. The first 50 issues in particular are amazing. Yeah. Including you gotta get all the, the tie-in and miniseries it's, as well. And it's but one yeah. of the ones where the tie-ins are worth every penny. Yeah, like, they, they're, they're really solid they're, stories. And they, and they, well, the only one so far that hasn't been is the April and Casey miniseries. Yeah, that's fair. You can fair. skip that one. That one yeah. sucks. But like um, the villain micro-series, the hero yeah. micro-series, the, the second one, the... Yeah. History of the Foot Clan. That one was awesome. Oh, so good. Yeah, at first I wasn't so sure about that whole, like, hey, look, we're reincarnated as Turtles part. But they, they sold yeah. it. Yeah. And the thing I... Oh, man, what was I going to say? The thing... Yeah, oh. The thing I love with that IDW run, and it's so frustrating with me with the last Ninja Turtles movies that I couldn't watch, I got... Like, <laughs> That's so bad. I got, like, 20 minutes through each of them. Yeah. Was, I'm like, you've got an amazing thing here to adapt. But it really does lift from so many of the different things. It's got homages to, to me, the amazing 1989 or 1990 movie. But it also has great nods to the cartoon. Like Donnie Rocks Machines as the password. But then... They, Donnie Does Machines. Donnie Does Machines yeah. as the password to like his, his computer. Yeah. And then the all red bandanas until they got the yeah. colored ones. Like yeah. it embraces so much even from the original parody violent comics yeah 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 there's like there's little tiny uh like if you you have to really be deep into the ninja turtle mythos to catch them like then they have slash the big monster yeah. turtle. he picks up his little uh palm tree and sticks it in his belt which is just from the like the archie comic books oh he had my gosh. like it's just crazy they just know their stuff really well yeah yeah but and one of the it's kevin eastman who's involved in it yeah right? yeah peter, La- peter laird is like nothing involved like he, he still owns the rights to the mirage verse okay like the original ninja turtle comics and he was writing volume four or three four i guess and he just kind of stopped he just didn't mm. like they got really strange anyway i was reading them like he has them for free online you can read the last few and it's weird stuff yeah 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 i i <laughs> Dar- <laughs> Raphael got turned into a tyrannosaurus rex type thing for a while what and donatello <laughs> got shrunk down and was in a like a robot version of himself and that, that's Leonardo, similar to Leonardo was in like the battle nexus trying to find Splinter who actually they thought was dead but wasn't and Michelangelo went off into space and mated with an alien triceraton type thing as Mikey does yep and then <laughs> and then I think he's brainwashed right now and like fighting a war with the triceratons yeah it's it's, it's this weird. is the mir- the mirage so? yeah yeah but they haven't, he hasn't written a, like a volume of it or an issue of it in like four years or whatever people okay. keep going on his blog and be like are you going to write any more of this and he's like yeah maybe one day <laughs> let me show you pictures of the pottery that I made like that's literally <laughs> what he's talking about these days. well yeah at some point he might be like I don't care yeah <laughs> go so, read go read Eastman stuff <laughs> yeah but and the other one that I really like um, Usagi Yojimbo uh, which I got into because I was reading Ninja Turtles it's this guy named Stan Sakai okay it has done sort of an independently uh, owned comic about a samurai rabbit uh set in set in like in feudal japan with anthropomorphic animals as the main characters and uh he, like you've seen in the old cartoons the samurai that's got the ears up and like he yeah, like, yeah 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 so he's he's i have like a whole bunch of the comics sorry i was having some bad flashbacks to ninja turtles 3 yeah no no not that <laughs> uh but um they're really good like it's just this one guy has written and drawn it like for 30 years interesting and they're they're oh, so yeah, they're, that's there right yeah there. they're so uh like the character development over time is really good the stories are interesting they teach you about japanese history the art is really fun it's just really good stuff i'm awesome. really enjoying usagi awesome. yojimbo by stan sakai usagi yojimbo means bunny bodyguard in japanese by the way i just got a lesson in japanese there you go <laughs> Uh, ones I'll recommend to you, although one I'm not sure if you if you will, because were you ever a Power Rangers guy? I used to watch it when I was a kid. Have you seen Boom Studio series? I knew that there was one. I haven't looked at it. I, I check it out. It's actually it's really fun. I only have the two volumes, and they're because I'm way behind. Okay. Because uh, you know me, I'll buy a bunch, and then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna slowly read this over the course of a year. Yeah, because it like, takes you forever to read comic books. It, uh, uh, a lot quicker than books. <laughs> a lot quicker than books. They are mostly pictures. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
or I'll be like, man, that X Force one was so good. I want to revisit that next or something. Rick Remender's X Force is very good. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Um. Anyways, yeah, check out Boom's uh Boom's Power Rangers is pretty cool. Cool. Because it takes like the spirit of the the cheesy spirit of the '90s show, but does put it in a bit of a contemporary setting. Is it like its own universe? It it's. Or Kind of related to the movies. No, no, it's like the characters from the original show. Like it's Jason, it's Kimberly. It looks like the actors who played them in the nineties, but in kind of 2015, 2016, okay. Zords and everything, and they've got an original villain who comes in later. Who's I'm not there yet, but spoilers is kind of like an amalgamation of like Tommy as the, an evil White Ranger, kind of with his Green Ranger powers from a different dimension comic books and Power Rangers but it's been really the first couple issues I'm like oh my gosh this is really good I bought it on a whim and I loved it cool and then uh the Darth Vader run on Star Wars was amazing yeah I've heard all of that all that Star Wars by Marvel stuff is really good I've checked out some of the other ones and I'm like yeah that's alright but the the Darth Vader run cool that he's got a different run now that takes place in a different time but yeah. They, they ended that one, I heard. Yeah, that, the first one, which was between... Like Colin Bunn? Is that who this by? Or? No, I can't remember her name. But it was... Grand Gillian? There we go, yeah. It, it's a girl? Yeah. Okay. It started at... A woman, I should say? <laughs> it started at the end of... It starts like two days after A New Hope. Yeah. And ends like a week before the events of Empire Strikes Back. Okay. So very interesting window, yeah. and especially Vader down, it's just so good. Cool. And you're a Zelda guy, so the Zelda mangas. Yeah, you've, I should borrow those from you. Yeah, I bought. I just bought a third one that had um, Seasons of... Uh, oh yeah, Oracles of Seasons. Oracles Oracle of, of Ages. Seasons and Oracle of Ages. I've never played those games, so that was like the first one. Cool. And it... Really cool story. Um, <laughs> man, this one's going long. Is there a character you want to get their own movie or show, like on Netflix, ABC? Hopefully not. Or a character I want them to get their own movie or show. Yeah. Uh... Moon Knight. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> I I I don't know. I feel like I'm good right now. Hey, fair enough. Yeah, I want I want them to. I want the DC stuff to be good. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. I, I, I was watching Flash and Arrow for a while, and I just stopped because it got so dumb. I really Flash is actually one of my favorite uh, DC characters too. So I'd like to see. I hope Ezra Miller's movie is good. He looks like a different take on the Flash, but which everything I've seen, I'm just like, I wish you were Wally, but that, just because I grew up with Wally. Yeah. Um, yeah, you did. Yeah. Special and that amazing Justice League cartoon. Yeah. Where was he was he it was Wally West as the Flash, oh, yeah. Interesting. Um they didn't even include Barry at all. I don't even think they referenced him. Interesting. In that. I know they did Young Justice a lot, and Young Justice was amazing in season three. Yeah, has that come out yet? And not yet. It's I think it's coming Is it gonna out be next on Netflix? Year. I'm not sure. Or is it gonna be on the D C streaming network? Oh man, I hope it's on Netflix. Uh. It just makes I want to see. You know what I want to see that's coming out is the Teen Titans show. Hmm. I'm not sure about that one, but like I really like the Teen Titans and I really like Dick Grayson. Yeah, uh, but we'll see. I'm not sure. Yeah, out of I, I'd, I'd love Moon Knight. Yeah, uh, Je- to me he'd be great for Netflix. Um, and the run just prior to Jeff Lemire would be, uh, which I've heard Lemire's run is great, and I'm looking forward to reading is that, it. That's um, Warren Ellis. No, no, no. There was a run between Ellis's where he's in Hollywood, and then it was right around the time Marvel did the Marvel Now. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, it only it only lasted three, but it uh, three there was three trade paperbacks, and that's how I read most of my comics. Yeah, um, it was really solid, and there was one issue where he was stopping a hostage situation at the New World Trade Center. There's a New World Trade Center. At, at least in Marvel. Okay. Um, <laughs> in the comics. I think I, I'm not sure I'm not up on world events apparently Fair enough. Um, but where he it's all kind of done on cell phone footage security camera footage each panel's that oh, nice. he's talking to the cops and then he's like this is Mr. Specter or this is Mr. Whoever and every situation that changed yeah. he'd be switching his personality which I'm like that's a great way because Moon Knight has like three four or at that time four personalities 
You'd just be a cool character. Huh. Or run on Ninja Turtles. Anyways. <laughs> a run on Ninja Turtles? Yeah, like a, a Netflix or a cartoon oh, based yeah, on yeah, the yeah, current yeah, yeah. Ninja Turtles run. That would be good. Oh, yeah. Um, Have you watched the Ninja Turtles cartoon that's on right now? No. Is that the CG one? Yeah, yeah. I've heard it's good. Yeah. I, I watched the four kids cartoon from the 2000s earlier. Some of it's good. Some yeah. of it's less good. Yeah. Where Shredder is the alien or... Yeah, it was actually pretty... Like, like it was well done. There was great And the Great Turtles Forever movie. Yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Turtles Forever. So good. So if, good. If y'all are listening to it, try to look it up online. If you made it this far into this weird conversation about comic books. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm hoping you have because this is interesting to us. Um, all right. We'll try to wrap this up. Um, are there... A, how do you th- find in the MCU? And I have no complaints except for the Inhumans. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. And I'm like, it's bad. Oh, and, and, and Iron like, Fist. Iron Fist was no good either. Mm-hmm. But you liked Iron Fist. Uh, yeah, I didn't hate it as much as everybody did. So yeah. same w- same guy, Scott Buck is the showrunner. For, yeah, for both of them, and I just, I mean, yeah, Inhumans. The first two pilot episode, double episode that Scott Buck wrote was brutal, and then it gets a little bit better, but it's not very good. But in terms of like the movies, yeah, and I actually, my wife and I watched Agents of Shield, and I just love that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the movies are generally very, very good, at least entertaining. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Avengers: Infinity War. Yeah, and Black, Black Panther. Panther looks Black Panther's sick. coming up first. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that trailer looked amazing. Yeah, seriously. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about the trailer was the song. The music was just somewhat off-putting to me. Yeah. Which was the exact opposite of the Punisher trailer, where I'm like, that's amazing, and that song is amping me up so much more. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I like the MCU a lot. I'm, I'm very happy. Yeah, it makes me happy. Yeah. I like things that connect and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping they'll... It's not as much like, all right, let's get all the properties out. Like, let's focus on quality. I really want Fantastic Four to go back to them. I don't really care so much about X-Men. I that's really fair. want Fantastic Four to go back to... to Marvel for the rights for that because I just really want that. But apparently, yeah. apparently, Marvel, um, the director of I don't know some famous director that people like is doing like a Doctor Doom movie. Yeah, but it's with Fox. Yeah. It's... Yeah, but like I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I'm not really interested, but apparently I'm... people are excited about that. So I, I like Doom, so I'm like, it's. But imagine if Doctor Doom was a bad guy in I know. In, in a Doctor Strange movie. Oh yeah, and you no, introduced him that way. Amazing. That would be so cool. It would be so cool. No, and the the only make it happen, Kevin Feige. Yeah, come on, guy. I know you're listening to us. Oh yeah, definitely. Ike, Pro- Ike Perlmutter. <laughs> you guys that make decisions about these things. Fox. Whoever owns Fox. How are y'all not losing money? And get rid of Fantastic Four. See, see the do a do a Sony deal. Although, don't do what Sony's doing with the Venom spinoffs and all that that aren't connected which Amy makes Pascal, no sense Pascal it's a bad idea please don't we, we just want good movies if I you know make... a lot of movie executives for apparently some reason. Yeah. <laughs> if you see if you make good movies people will go it happens uh, people do see bad movies but Transformers 5 which universally sucks did not make money Civil War which was really good made a lot of money there's been five Transformers movies there's been five Transformers movies people stop it <laughs> and there's gonna be a Bumblebee spinoff yeah. and so he's, he's the one that talks through the radio doesn't even talk yeah that's good yeah. at some point Stupid. someone's like they should do a Beast Wars movie I've been re-watching Beast Wars I'm like I love this show I'm not sure if it would work as a movie yeah anyways um it would be like Planet Earth <laughs> gosh if you do like Slashed a with... serious Planet Earth style thing but it's Beast Wars like a documentary David Attenborough can uh, narrate it <laughs> oh my gosh I <clears throat> and then you just, just because he's amazing, just get Idris Elba to voice Megatron. Tell me that wouldn't be awesome. Fine, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll close it off with, um, what are your favorite MCU movies? And then some of, yeah, no, what are your favorite MCU movies or favorite comic book movies in general? Best comic book movie is Captain America Winter Soldier. Mm. Hands down, that is the best one. Mm. Um, it's just a good movie. Forget comic book movie. Yeah. Um, that's the best one. I, I really liked Winter or uh, Civil War as well, uh, just because it was fun. It had, so fun. And and, and I, 
when Spider Man was on the screen in that movie, I had this huge grin on my face because I love Spider Man. And, and I didn't really even well get done. to see Civil War with you, did I? No, I went and sat with my wife and my siblings. But oh, okay. uh, Winter Soldier is the best. There's a lot of good ones. Uh, Iron Man one was really good. Um, I'm hoping that Thor Ragnarok is really good. Yeah. I like Spider Man Homecoming. Uh, there's a lot of middle of the road ones. Yeah, Avengers is cool because of what it did. It's probably not the greatest movie no, ever. No, no. Um, but it's, I really enjoyed it. Um, I've actually rewatched, and I'm like, there's Avengers two is not as good as Avengers one, but there's part of the parts of Avengers two I like so much more yeah. than Avengers. 1. I really like Hawkeye's arc in Avengers. Yeah, 2. and I like them all being a team because it's not like a, okay, well now we got to do the yeah. making of them the team story. Yeah, and there wasn't out of nowhere weird camera shots and that was strange. cinematography yeah it's like let's go upside down or focus in a or do it like in the mirror of a motorcycle yeah, or, or, yeah that was that was weird just takes me right out of the flick i'm like yeah. why are you doing this that's true yeah fair enough uh i'll say some of my batman begins is probably my favorite just because batman is my favorite those are good movies i like all three of those yeah yeah batman Be- like batman begins outside of comic uh cartoon ones is probably the best comic book Batman I've seen on the big screen. The best comic book Batman movie is the one with Adam West. I will fight you. Hands down. <laughs> Hands down. Did you actually see the cartoon one where they got Adam West back? No, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen that one. I want it's to. good, but weird. Yeah. And there's yeah. another one they, uh, coming out soon, Batman vs. Two-Face, where it's the Adam West Batman and Two-Face, and they recorded it before Adam West died. Oh, I forgot he died. Yes, yeah, so it's the it's the last one with him. So that one's coming <clears throat> cool. up. Uh, probably Batman Begins. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is up there. That's one of your favorites. It's what? Oh, it's one of the best com- like for adaptation of a comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winter Soldier. I'd probably put it number two. I want to put it at number one, but my love of Batman, it's just that difficult yeah, because yeah. Batman Begins has so many like pure great from the page Batman moments. Yeah, yeah. And Winter Soldier is hands down the best Marvel movie. Yeah, unquestionably. And Scott Pilgrim's up there. It's one of the best adaptations, and it stands, still stands alone and original amongst all these comic book movies. Yeah, I didn't love that one very much, but that's okay. Fair enough. And then the Ninja Turtles '90s movie, the first one. <laughs> I lo- it like it's a product of its time, but it's so good. Fair enough. So funny. All right, Steve. Well, thank you for uh, talking for an hour. That's almost. been an hour. We've been doing this almost an hour. Sorry, everybody. We apologize for nothing. Hope you found it entertaining. Uh, and if you sat through it, thank you so much. Hey, uh, what are your guys' favorite comics? Comment down below and uh, like and share if you can. Thanks for listening and God bless, my friends. Take care, guys. Bye.